AI is one of those topics that get a lot of game developers nervous, because while at least some amount of AI is essential for most games, it seems like such a difficult thing to tackle. And so today, we're going to be starting up a brand new series on this channel where we attempt to demystify all of the little things that go into creating AI. And in today's Godot tutorial, we're going to be learning about the engine that makes everything work, the base on which everything else is built on top of. And that thing is called the state machine. So what exactly is a state machine? When it comes to video games, and especially with AI, you're going to be dealing with a lot of different events that cause changes to happen in the game. For example, if you shoot at an enemy character who is patrolling a certain area, maybe you want that enemy to panic and get behind cover. Or in other terms, you could say that you want the enemy to transition from a patrolling state to a duck and cover state. And if that enemy's health gets really low, then maybe you want them to enter into a berserk state where they rush after you and try to pummel you to death. And you could have a bunch of different conditions where the enemy character does something different depending on what state it's in. And so a good way to handle changing between all of these different states is with something known as a state machine, which is what we're going to be building in this video. So let's open up Godot, and I'm going to be using this dummy model that I created in order to demonstrate the state machine. Now, this isn't actually all that important. If you don't have your own model, that's fine. You don't need to use it. Or if you've got a different model, you can use that instead. It really doesn't matter. Today, we're going to be teaching more of a concept that applies to a lot of different things rather than a very specific scenario. That being said, if you want to include the model in your own project for whatever reason, just follow the link in the description. It'll take you to the download. But if we go into the dummy scene, you'll see that we have the model for the dummy itself. And we also have a raycast sticking out of its chest, and it's about 10 units long. I'll explain what that does in just a bit. And if we dig even deeper into the dummy model, you'll see that in my case, I've got some animations attached to it. If we click on the animation player, and I've got three different poses for the character. Uh, there's an idle state where he's just standing, there's an alert state where he's alert, and then there's a stun state where he's clutching his head like as if a bomb or something went off next to him. We'll get into this in just a little bit, but now let's actually create the state machine. So I'm going to go back to the main scene for the dummy. I'm going to right click on the main node for the dummy, and I'm going to attach a new script to it. I'm just going to go ahead and call it something like dummy state machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and click create. So now we have our empty script and we're going to begin creating our state machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a list of all the possible states that my dummy could be in. And to do that, we're going to use something called an enumerator, or in GD script, it's called enum. So you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 what the heck is this? Okay, so let me explain. So unless you're an absolute beginner with using GD script and programming, you're probably familiar with something known as a variable. And all a variable is, is really just like a little pocket in a computer's memory that stores a little bit of information. So for example, we could create a variable called number, and we could store a value in it, say like the number four. Similar to a variable is something known as a constant, or in the case of GDScript, const. Constants are basically the same thing as a variable, except that once you give it some sort of data, that data cannot be changed unlike a variable. So let's say we have a new constant also called number, and we give it a value of two. So now that we've given it the value of two, as a constant, it will always be two. Whereas with a variable, right now it's four, but we could write some code that changes it to seven or some other number, and that's perfectly fine. Which is the reason why this is called a variable, because it can vary, and this is called a constant, because it always stays the same. If you really wanted to, you can create a hundred different constants, and that's totally fine. Maybe we'll call this one number two, and that's so give it a value of seven. We can create another one, constant number three, and give that a value of one or something like that. It doesn't matter. So now that we know all of this, it's fairly easy to understand what an enumerator is because an enumerator is basically just a set of constants. So for example, instead of writing three different constants, you could just create an enumerator you can give it a open close curly bracket and you can write number equals two comma 
number two equals seven, comma, number three equals one. And so this is essentially the exact same thing as writing three different constants. So really we can go ahead and just delete all of this because it's not necessary. But there's actually another very useful thing that you can do with enumerators, and that is you can actually use them to define different states for a state machine. And so instead of giving a name and then giving it a value, what you can do instead, you can delete all of this, and you can write down the name of different states. So for example, in my situation, maybe I want to have an idle state, I'll have an alert state, and I'll also have a stun state. And we don't need to assign these things any values, we can just give it a name, and now that's the name of our states. So now that we have our states, we need to make a way for our character to transition between the different states. To do that, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to write var state equals idle. And basically, it's just going to keep track of what state our character is in. In this case, we want to start it off with idle. This next part isn't strictly necessary, but in my case, I want to create a reference to the raycast that's sticking out of the character's chest because I want to use it as part of this demonstration. So we'll go back to the script, and under this line, we're going to write onReadyVar raycast equals dollar sign raycast. And I also want to create a reference to our character's animation player because I want our character to play different animations depending on what state it's in. So again, we'll go back into the script, and under this line, we're going to write onReadyVar AP equals in my case, dollar sign mail 001 export test 004 slash animation player. This is probably going to be completely different in your specific case, so don't worry too much about this. And so now we're ready to create our state machine. And in order to do that, we need to create a brand new function. So under this code right here, we're going to write func underscore process delta. This is our process function, and it updates every single frame. In it, we're going to write match state and i'll explain what this does in just a second and inside of it we're going to write down all of our different states so we have idle colon we have alert colon and we have stun colon and so now we want to give instructions about what our character should do when it's in a specific state so if our character is in the idle state inside of it i'm going to write ap.play idle so if it's in the idle state, I want the animation player to play the idle animation. Similarly, if our character is in the alert state, ap.play alert, and if our character is in the stun state, ap.play stunned. So here we have all of the different states that our character can be in, and all of the different actions that the character will take if they're in a particular state. So here we wrote match state, and if you remember, we created a variable called state, and we set its state to idle. What match does is it will match, just like the name suggests, whatever it is we set as our state. So for example, since we set our state to idle, match will take a look at state up here, it'll see that it's idle, and it'll say, okay, we're just going to run whatever it is inside the idle state. So if we change this to alert, then match will take a look at that, see that it's in the alert state, and it will run whatever is inside the alert state, and it won't run whatever's in the idle state. And the same thing for stunned. If, for example, we created another variable, var other state, and we set it to alert, we could change this state to other state, and in that case, match will match whatever it is in other state, not state. But we're just gonna go ahead and change this back to state and get rid of this. So now, if you run the game, you'll see that our character is in the idle pose, and there's really not much you can do to interact with it right now. Now, let's make it so that this character will enter into different states depending on various things that you as a character do. So we're going to go back into the script, and we're going to create a few conditions that will determine what state our character is in. So in our process function, we're going to add a few more things. We're going to write if raycast.isColliding, state equals alert. So if something is colliding with the raycast that's sticking out of our character's chest, in this line right here, then our character will be put into the alert state. And if it's in the alert state, then it'll play the alert animation. We're also going to write 
elif input dot is action pressed fire so if we press the fire button in my case it's the left click on my mouse we're going to write state equals stunned so if we press fire it'll enter into the stun state and in stunned it'll play the stunned animation and then we're going to write else so if none of these things are happening state equals idle so if the ray cast isn't colliding and if we're not pressing the fire button then the character will default to the idle state now before we run the game i'm going to go into debug and i'm going to check the box that says visible collision shapes just to help visualize what's going on so now we're in the game and as you can see there's a yellow ray cast sticking out of our character's chest right now it's in the idle state and so it's in the idle pose but watch what happens when we move our character into the raycast. The raycast turns red because it's colliding with something and our character changes its pose to the alert pose. If we move out of the raycast, then our character goes back to the idle pose. And if we hold down the fire button, our character enters into the stun state and now it's in the stun pose. If we let go of the fire button, then it returns back to idle. And with that, we now have a very basic state machine which will serve as the backbone for all of the AI we'll be adding to the character in future videos. Now, some of you may be wondering why we would even bother to create a state machine when we can get the exact same results with a bunch of if statements. And in future videos on this topic, we'll begin talking about the benefits of state machines and how they can make your life as a game developer a lot easier. But until then, thanks for watching the video, and as always, Make sure to join the Discord community for some awesome game dev discussion. And if you like the video, be sure to like it, subscribe it, share it, bell it, and comment it. Thank you. Have a nice day.